So we're here with Matthew Burton, who's running for the Woodlands Township Board of Directors position six. And today was the first day of early voting. Are you excited about that? It was. I'm very excited, Jason. It was. I was out there at the, at the not at the crack of dawn, but when polls opened, and you know, it's exciting to see everybody show up at the polls and start voting, and you get out there and talk to them. That's been my, one of my favorite things is just talking to voters, and I think it's exciting. Very cool. Where's that? Where was that at? Um, Where's the polls at that you're at today? Uh, yeah, so over by the, um, so there's there's one early voting location in Montgomery County, and it's at the, adjacent to the, the library there by the pavilion. Okay. I forget the name of the place. Yeah. You go to the library and it's in that same parking lot. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about why you love the Woodlands and what makes it such a great place. Yeah, so everybody who's running for township obviously loves the Woodlands. And I particularly love the Woodlands because I've chosen to raise my family here with the great schools and with the forested environment for the most part. And one of my favorite things to do on a morning like, like this morning when it's not too hot outside is, you know, there's kind of a mist rising over Lake Woodlands and I'm a part of the rowing club up there. Oh, cool. And it's one of the most pristine experiences you can have is out there just rowing in a single, a single skull you know, with the mist rising off the lake. Yeah, that sounds and, like a lot of fun. Yeah, you can't get that kind of stuff in other parts of, of the Houston area. Why did you choose to run for the Woodlands Township Board of Directors? Very simple. Um, I've been a community activist starting this year, as a lot of people know, with the clear-cutting issue here in Creekside and our successful petition. And I've really enjoyed doing that. I had no intention of running for public office until Peggy Hausman, the retiring incumbent from position number six, mm -hmm. she worked on me for a little bit and mm -hmm. convinced me and, and asked me to run in the end. And, and I thought it was a good idea. Yeah, that's all. That's great. Peggy's a great lady. Yep. She, she's endorsed me and I, I take that endorsement seriously. That's uh, there's big shoes to fill with Peggy. That's for sure. How would you say your campaign's been going so far? I think it's been going great. The response that we've gotten on, on social media, uh, people thanking me for you know standing up and giving them a voice on a lot of issues that have been bothering them for quite a while. And you know, in a campaign that's grassroots like mine, you know, uh, my wife is my, you know, my, my cameraman, my videographer, my, my media person, and I'm my own campaign manager, mm -hmm. and my kids are my you know, campaign workers helping me get signs out. Yeah. It's, it's been a lot of fun and I've enjoyed the most getting out there and just going door to door and talking to people who care mm -hmm. and getting their perspective on what matters in the woodlands. That's awesome. Your wife's helping out a lot. That seems that's really cool that you guys are doing a family kind of a grassroots. It's, it's been a lot of work, but I think no matter how this ends up, we'll look back at this experience for our family and it'll be a positive thing that my kids will always look back on. That's so awesome. Who are your direct opponents, uh, opponents running for position six in the election? Yes. So my primary opponents are Chuck Meyer and Ann Snyder. Okay. And then uh, what would you say sets you apart from other candidates and would make you the best fit for position six? So for position six, and I should say I've enjoyed throughout this experience getting to know Chuck and Ann better. Uh, Chuck has, a, has, has an amazing intellect and his commentary in some of our debates has been really interesting. And Anne is just, as, as people who know her will attest, she is a, she is a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. And I've enjoyed getting to know them better and, and we've run, I think, a really, a really friendly but energetic campaign for position number six. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be running, however, if I didn't think that I was the best candidate for what the Woodlands needs right now. And maybe 10 years ago, I wouldn't be the best qualified candidate for what the Woodlands needs mm -hmm. right now with the issues facing our community. Mm -hmm. I believe, and I've said this all along, that what we need is a director on the board who's willing to stand up for residents, mm -hmm. even with uh, really strong opposition from development companies, developers, the county, the establishment entrenched interests, I would say. And I'm the only candidate that has a proven track record of twice in recent history this year, first with clear cutting and second with the Woodlands Parkway extension, mm -hmm. fighting publicly and actively to, you know, to stand with residents. Yeah. And I think that's what they're looking for in this campaign. And I think that's why I'm the best qualified. 
Your change.org position did great. Uh, how many signers did you get on that petition? Yeah, we ended up getting just, uh, just a little over 2,300 signatures asking the development company to not do anything drastic, but really just to develop Creekside Park with the same care for tree preservation that they have the older parts of the woodlands. And it's had an effect. Chairman Tuff claimed in some online videos that you've unfairly criticized his lack of support for clear cutting. Uh, did he sign your original petition on clear cutting? He did not. He did not sign our petition okay. on, on clear cutting. Um, I asked him to. I asked him to several times. And I know that he, he feels like he's being unfairly attacked. And I'm surprised that he feels that way because as an incumbent, uh, your record, your public record is, is fair game. And I've simply, I feel like given the facts that I asked for his support mm -hmm. uh, twice and he refused to give it and why he would claim that he actually did now when all the facts are laid out in, in email and public record is, is confusing to me. So Chairman Tuff didn't sign your petition. Uh, do you have a good professional relationship with Bruce Tuff? I, I think we absolutely do. I've, I've gotten to know Bruce better through this campaign and I think he's a I think he's a really dynamic individual. I enjoy talking to him and I enjoy talking to everybody on his on his on his campaign team as well. His campaign manager is a great guy. Um, you know, and, and Bruce is in a tough position. I, I, I get that. If I were in his position, I probably wouldn't have signed the petition or supported it either. Um, because, you know, when you have such a such a legacy of accepting support from the development company, financial and other other support, um, I would be in a tough situation. I don't think I would feel comfortable signing the petition or opposing the Woodlands Parkway extension either. Um, but I, he and I have a great relationship, a fine relationship, a cordial relationship. That's great. And if we serve together on the board of directors, I'm sure that will continue. That's awesome. What about the rest of the candidates? Do you have a pretty good relationship with most of them? Ab absolutely. A absolutely. Um, I've gotten to know Ann, Ann Snyder a lot better through this, through this campaign and her husband, Jerry, they're both great. And Ann's done a wonderful thing. I think she recognized, uh, she recognized that there was a concern early on about her conflict of interest with being still the CEO of Interfaith and accepting, asking for large contributions from the development company for Interfaith. And I give her all the credit in the world for recognizing that and announcing that she intends to step down from Interfaith. And that, totally neutralizes the issue and I give her a lot of credit for that. That's great. What are some major accomplishments that you've had on, on your campaign trail since you started running for the Woodlands Township Board of Directors? So I think one of the biggest accomplishments really is just getting in tune with voters in other parts of the Woodlands yeah. where really our, our core of support against uh, against clear cutting was obviously here in Creekside and in the newer parts of the woodlands. Mm -hmm. But it's been it's been wonderful to get out there and do the block walking and get to know people yeah. in all the villages of the woodlands and talk to them about what they care about because really we care about the same top issues mm -hmm. all around the woodlands. And if people you tell somebody that you live in the woodlands, what's the first thing that comes to mind? It's the trees. Yeah, it's great. absolutely. And everybody is worried about preserving our forested aesthetic in our community, mm -hmm. and they've been really pleased to yeah. to know that we're that we're doing something to to actively try to preserve that. Yeah, the trees are a major part of the woodlands. Without them, it would not be the woodlands. It, it's just a. I'm not sure how they they got into the clear cutting in the first place. So I think that's a great thing you're doing. Um, we know you were, you're a major supporter of George Mitchell's vision for the Woodlands from, from previous interviews and um, talking to you in the past. Tell us a little bit about why you thought Mr. Mitchell's vision was so great for the Woodlands and why it's important that we carry on his vision for the residents of the Woodlands. Yeah, so I never had the pleasure of, of knowing George Mitchell. Uh, I've talked with a lot of people who worked closely with him in the development of our community, and it would have been a great honor to, to meet him. I feel like our community is rated number one in Texas consistently because of the vision and the stick to itness of one great man in, in George Mitchell and, and of course his wife. Um, and our community will not be the number one community in Texas mm -hmm. if we stray from his vision. Yep. That he's the reason why, why we're great 
and we need to protect it. And one of the one of the most humbling parts of the whole kind of media frenzy earlier this year about our clear cutting petition was when the Houston Chronicle interviewed his his granddaughter who who runs the Cynthia and George Mitchell Foundation. Mm -hmm. And she was quoted as saying, hey, if, if George Mitchell were alive today, he would have signed the petition. I believe that. I believe he would have. I mean, he, he built it. He wanted the, the trees were a main part. And I think that he would have signed the petition as well. And, and, that, means, and that means a lot to me. You know, I'm, I've only lived here two and a half years, but I love the woodlands just as much as anybody else. Mm -hmm. And the people that I talk to as I get out and, and talk to my friends and neighbors and people all over the woodlands is, whether they've lived here six months or 30 years, everybody loves the woodlands and they all vote and they want to preserve what's special. I believe that. That's true. What are some things you will do for residents if you are elected and why should they vote for you? Oh, I think, I think it's pretty clear. There, there's a tough choice in position six because there are some great people running for the position. But if I have the privilege of being elected, I can guarantee voters that I will stand with residents anytime there's a conflict between residents and the development company. I've, I've been concerned to see top developers of the area pour you know, nearly $10,000 into this campaign in direct campaign contributions mm -hmm. to try to influence the outcome of our election. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's appropriate for them to run their company and develop their land, mm -hmm. but let the residents of the woodlands elect the people that we feel can best represent us mm -hmm. and let us run our own government without interference and meddling from big money in our little local election here. And what are some ways residents can support you? I think number one, voting is active now. You gotta get out and get out and vote. And also spread the word this is my, my campaign as I've said all along, has been, has been grassroots. It's about people caring and people spreading the word on Facebook and other social media, you know, through their PTO groups. Everybody's been involved. And I think the outcome of this election will really, uh, will, will really, we will really see if, you know, grassroots beats big money. And I hope it will. We're seeing your signs in a lot of places uh, throughout the woodlands. Uh, if people want your signs, how can they get them? All I have to do is message me on my Facebook page. And I'm very responsive to that. And people have been doing that all along. And I just, I love hearing from people. Awesome. Awesome. So thanks for your time, Matthew. Appreciate Thank you. you Thank you. Good to see you again, Jason. Always a pleasure. Thank you.